almost 26 a.m. on the lawn here at your service. to transition to permanent housing, you get to take the desk, you can take the chair, you can take the table, the bed is yours, the TV is yours, oh, wow. so all, and all the furnishings. Um, the real ones actually have cabinets and they have a microwave, so there's you know the dishes and all the cookware, the yeah. bathrooms are, you know, have all of the toiletries. They have um, fully functioning kitchens and bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, they're designed for veterans that have PTSD issues, so the design is on purpose that there is just the one door in the regular homes. There's typically a window in the front, and then we just put the windows on one side so that they're not looking into their neighbor's home. Gives them a little bit more sense of security. Been working on this for three years, finally coming to fruition here. presentation of the colors and the national anthem. My name is Mark Solomon. I am a Navy reservist currently, deploying in 48 hours. I am a, an Iraqi war vet. I am also a co-founder of Veterans Community Project. Five years ago, Veterans Community Project was an idea on a napkin. A group of combat veterans got together and decided that we wanted to end veteran homelessness. Now, there have been a million steps between napkin to today, yet that was the mission, end the veteran homelessness around the country. This particular group of combat veterans, uh, the founders, the co-founders, represent service in the Army. Uh, and uh, while we're talking about this, any, uh, any folks serve in the Army? Stand up. I'll, uh, I'll talk a little slower for my harmony fest. <laughs> uh, anyone uh, from the, uh, the Ar um, sorry, the Marine Corps? Stand up, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Air Force. And um, the 
180. Thank you all for your service, especially those in the name. So this particular group of combat veterans that started Veterans Community Project represented the Army, Marine Corps, and the Navy. On the surface, the co-founders don't seem to have a lot in common. We, uh, we look different, we're from different backgrounds, yet there are three things for sure that we do have in common, that we recognize that uh, together these make sense. So the first thing that we have in common is that every founder understands that the Navy guy is actually the smartest and best looking one of the group. <laughs> every single one of the founders knows that. You can ask them later. Just go ahead and tweet it out, it's a real thing. Second, we all took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We were willing to defend the country up to and including with our lives. Third, we all found it inexcusable that on any given night, a night like tonight, there would be 40,000 Americans who took that same oath to defend the Constitution that might be sleeping on the streets. 40,000 people every single night in the United States who took an oath to serve their country are sleeping on the streets every single night. While inexcusable, it's not insurmountable. BCP's humble beginnings as a tiny idea on a napkin five years ago, has now turned into this. We have a village of 49 tiny houses in Kansas City and a 5,000 square foot community center and an outreach center where veterans can just walk in and say, I need a. The same thing is gonna happen here. Soon, this dirt will be a village of tiny houses as well, serving homeless veterans. We are excited to be a part of the Longmont, Boulder, and greater Colorado communities. And in interest of time for our special guest, uh, I've been told to keep it short. You're welcome, sir. So um, I'm going to uh, introduce a good friend of mine uh, who will introduce our next speaker. Uh, he's a CEO of Veterans Community Project, a Marine, and one of my best friends, Brian Meyer. Mark, uh, just so you know, we just thought it'd be funny to tell you you had to wear your mask while you talk. You don't actually have to. Uh, <laughs> uh, smartest. There he is, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I am going to be very brief because uh, Mark said a lot of things very appropriately. But uh, I, I've been fortunate enough over the course of Veterans Community Project uh, to have the opportunity to stand in front of a lot of people and thank them for what they've done for us and what they've done for the veteran community. Uh, and it's always extremely difficult because how do you describe what we do? You know, we, we build tiny homes as transitional housing. We're there for all veterans, all that stuff. But uh, thank you, better. Uh, but I think, you know, I think what we really do is we construct really living memorials to that idea and promise that we're never gonna leave a veteran behind. Meaning that these villages are a physical representation of the promise and the feelings that we all have that we wanna do more for vets and make sure that we never leave someone behind. When myself, the other co-founders, Vinny, raise your hand. Brandon, raise your hand. Yeah, when we were deployed, it was our job to make sure we didn't leave anybody we deployed with behind. Well, we come back here and this is the community's job to make sure we don't leave anybody behind. And I want to congratulate the community because so many times veteran homelessness is thought of this big issue that's, that's too large to fix and we can't do anything about it. But here, what you guys are saying are these veterans sleep on our streets, our parks, they're our brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. We're not going to wait on somebody else to fix it. We're going to do something about it ourselves. That's what this village is. It's living, breathing, representation, and memorial to everything that everybody's done. So be proud of it, take ownership over it, and know that you're really having that impact. So thank you all so, so much to everyone who supported us. You all right? Okay, sorry, I don't want to embarrass you by pointing out. All right, everybody look at me. Uh, and more importantly, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to introduce our, our next very special guest, uh, 
Everybody knows the governor here. And I, I do want to say something. It means a lot, sir, for you to come out. It means a lot to veterans, homeless veterans, non-homeless veterans, that you would take time to come down, make some remarks, and just be here and show support for what we're doing. It may not seem like it means something, but it really means a lot. It's going to mean a lot for every veteran who moves into this village to know that you were here on this day. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, Governor Foles. Thank you. You know, uh, in a uh, in a world and in a Colorado with a pandemic and fires and and drought and, and riots, uh, hope starts here. Hope starts here. Certainly, the best part of my week. I think for many of you, the best part of your week. Uh, it's exciting to see the hard work uh, and the vision that is leading to this amazing project uh, right here in, in Longmont. You know, I want to thank uh, the co-founders, Brian Meyer, Brandon Mixon, uh, Vincent Morales, and Mark Solomon, who's uh, deploying in the next 48 hours. So, uh, Mark, thanks for, for being here today with us, and thanks for... Uh, serving our country and, and responding to the call of the times to protect our freedoms. I also want to give thanks to the combat veterans who founded Veteran Community Project, uh, really the folks who served our country and, and helping to end veteran homelessness in our country. It's our solemn responsibility to make sure that those who wear the uniform of our, of our country protecting our freedoms, that we have their back when they return. You know, my... Uh, Partner Marlon's um, grandfather, Bernie, served in World War II. And uh, Marlon's mother, Wendy, grew up her first few years in a Quonset hut. Um, and I have to say, the technology and the livability has improved quite a bit since that time. I've seen pictures. I've heard stories. Uh, it's a lot better. And uh, folks who live here will have key card access to a swimming pool, uh, beautiful views of the mountains. Uh, great, uh, great access to really everything they need, including the services they need to, to get ahead uh, and to succeed and get on their feet. And frankly, our nation needs to respond to the call of supporting those who protect us because it is a disgrace that on any given night here in the United States, in towns and cities across our country, about 40,000 veterans go without a roof over their heads. And many more face hardships and risk uh, losing their housing and live in unstable housing situations. These are brave men and women who've saved our country, but they've often fallen on hard times. Um, sometimes they weren't able to find the support when they returned home. Sometimes they're, they're paying the price, mentally and physically, for what they've seen and what they've experienced while defending our freedoms. And Colorado is not immune to this national challenge. And of course, we are proud of our state's strong military tradition, home to over 400,000 veterans. My goal as governor is to make Colorado the very best place for veterans uh, in the entire country. And yet we still have about 1,000 veterans who are homeless in our state. And while that number has decreased and there's been progress made, and I visited projects in Colorado Springs and Pueblo and other parts of our state, let me be clear that any number above zero is completely unacceptable in the state of Colorado. Together with our federal partners, uh, with the Veteran Administration and Housing and Urban Development, we've taken great strides towards addressing chronic homelessness among our veterans. Each year, we distribute housing vouchers to ensure veterans receive housing and wraparound services. And just last year, we administered about 1,000 uh, of these vouchers. And, and we are also focused on serving veterans across our entire state. We opened up just last year an amazing new veteran service center in Grand Junction. Uh, and we continue to make sure that we can meet people where they are, no matter where you live uh, in our great state. Our voucher team and Department of Housing continues to provide critical services, but we know, we know that it does not yet meet the need. We know that it is not enough. And I couldn't be more grateful for those who donate, who contribute, who volunteer, for Veterans Community Project, for filling that gap. And filling that gap in an innovative and effective way that, frankly, we can all learn from on both the public and the private side. This Vets Village that we're celebrating 
has incorporates methods that have a proven track record of success. Community-based veterans helping veterans. It's a holistic view to solving the challenge. It means it's housing, but it's not just housing. It pairs housing with the camaraderie of living in a structured environment with other veterans who've walked the walk, additional services, education, health, wellness programming, access to a nice swimming pool. This village, when it's completed, will really help give a veteran everything they need to live their lives with dignity, respect, and honor. Uh, that is their right that we owe them for their service. This village is designed to provide not just the physical space, but the emotional space, the case management services, to fully address the underlying causes of each person's situation, of each veteran's homelessness. It's about setting up veterans for success, short, medium, and long term. And by the way, veterans means all veterans, whether their service was short or whether service was long, regardless of how that service ended. Any veteran who pledged an oath put themselves at risk to serve our country is deserving of our support. And I'm really glad to see that there's a more expansive mission here than some of the definitions of veterans that we're able to serve on the public side. We have a sacred contract in America with our service members. While you're protecting us on bases and battlefields around the world, we have an obligation to protect you and your family, both while you're in service and when you return to civilian life. And on the public side, we need to do our best to uphold our end of the bargain and the citizens of our great nation. As volunteers and donors to this project, you are doing your part to support our end of that bargain. I'm so excited that the Veterans Community Project is a partner to address the challenge of veteran homelessness in our state. It's a model, a model of innovation that we can expand and replicate. I'm so pleased and grateful that our state is the very first expansion site outside of Kansas City. Uh, and I can't wait to be here once the village is complete. Uh, this will be a much needed refuge and sanctuary for veterans experiencing homeless and Boulder and Longmont and Weld and really throughout northern Colorado. Uh, I, in addition to thanking VCP and Brian and Brandon and Vincent and Mark, I think we're also joined by uh, Senator Kerry Donovan, a great champion of, of veterans. I want to thank Senator Donovan for her work in the legislature. And I want to thank the city of Longmont and everybody who came together to make this groundbreaking possible with a permanent legacy of knowing that everyone involved can look themselves in the mirror and know that they did their part to help make sure that we honor those who protected our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate it. We've got a, uh, uh, something to give you here so you can take with you. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Veterans Community Project, again, we really do appreciate your support of veterans and also being here today. It means a lot to all of us. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next up, I appreciate everybody. Uh, if you're, uh, sorry if you're out there working on your tan, I apologize. You're doing great, though. Okay, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming. So uh, next, what uh, I want to do is introduce to you uh, one of our great partners. We would not be here today, literally, if it weren't for uh, this particular partner helping with all of the things that are going on right now uh, from a city perspective. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you could give me a round of applause for uh, Harold Dominguez, the city manager of Long. We're good. Hey, Brian, thanks for not doing to me what you did to Mark yeah. with a mask. I appreciate I like that. that. <laughs> um, you know, it's been interesting to, to see the evolution of this project. And I think about a, a time when, and, and the first thing I actually want to do, uh, council members in the audience, can, can you please stand and former council members that have been associated with this project? I know I saw two.
thank the council for this and, uh, um, and council member Finley. Um, what many people may not know, this started as a conversation at one point with the council about joining the mayor's challenging challenge to ending homelessness for a veterans community. Um, and then it evolved. And it's been really interesting for me to be part of this. It's been a pleasure for me to be part of this and to meet uh, the founders uh, and everyone that's been working on this. I've learned a lot. And, and for me, uh, I, can't, I, I did not serve in the military, but uh, almost every one of my uncles did. And I had several cousins. And for me, it's a passion for me to help anyone that served our country based on what um, I experienced and how I was raised. I was raised um, by a single parent, and so I had a lieutenant colonel and a master sergeant in the Marines help her raise me. And so I grew up in that military background, even though I didn't serve it. So I'm very passionate about this project. I want to thank Kevin Molshai. Kevin, uh, thanks for introducing us to VCP. Uh, and, and I think it's a we didn't know we were where we would end up, but we're there, and I'm really excited to see that come to fruition. Um, founders, um, thank you. I had the opportunity, and I think it was late 19, time is sort of in a different place today because of everything we're dealing with, and I, I had the opportunity to, to visit the community in Kansas City. Um, and just seeing the impact that it had on people's lives and the way they interacted with the vet, with the veteran community was inspiring to me. Literally the day that I showed up, there was one individual that was just reunited with his kids. He wasn't, his kids I believe were in foster care. Because he was homeless, he didn't have the ability to have his kids with him. And that day I think was the first day that they were able to play catch in, in the area, in the common area of the veterans village. And when you hear those stories and you see the impact that it has on people's lives, you have no choice but to want to be part of that. Um, and it reinforced the passion that you all have, reinforced for me that this is a model as government that we need to learn from, we need to embrace, and, and we need to do everything that we can to help those that have um, defended our country. You have inspired me. Um, to do better when it comes to homelessness, when it comes to things like affordable housing. So every day that it gets harder, I think of what you all had to do and what you had to overcome to get started, and just know that you're in my mind constantly, so thank you. Homelessness is one of the most significant challenges that we face as communities, states, and as a nation. And we've talked about veterans' homelessness, so I've had a lot of bullet points that people have talked about, so I'm going to kind of push those away now. Um, every level of government has consistently tried to attack this problem. In my 20-year career, the one certainty that I've come away with is that we cannot do this as government alone. It takes everyone in the community to be part of this. And that creates permanent, sustainable change in terms of how we support our homeless veterans, and how we support our community as a whole. Longmont's known for coming together um, and working collectively to address any number of social issues. I can sit here and rattle off how we work together to overcome the flood, how we've tried to come together um, in terms of what we've tried to attempt um, dealing with homelessness. And, and, you know, really homelessness is no exception. We have partnerships with our faith-based community, our center, hope. Boulder County, and many other organizations, and obviously our residents who become part of this, to, um, to house those options for those that are unhoused. There's not an organization better suited to add to the partnership in Longmont than BCP. The work that they will undertake will add capacity to our overall system that will allow the city and other organizations to actually help more people. And that, for me, is also inspiring because what we think it's important, it, while this is focused on veterans, it gives us the ability to help more people in our community. The beauty of this partnership, and Brian and I have been talking about it, Mark and I have been talking about that, talking about it, is it just doesn't end with this step. The beauty of the partnership is how do we take this and use this as a launching point where we can do more for each other and we can support each other. I'm extremely excited to see how we can continue to grow this partnership, serve our community, and I'm extremely excited to continue working with you all and everyone that's part of this project. Um, I've told them, 
uh, when they get ready to build houses. You all may not know this. I'm a closet DIYer and love to build. And one of the first things I want to do is help build a house. Uh, I want to donate my personal time to this to be part of this project. Thank you for coming to Longmont, uh, and I really appreciate it, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Before you go anywhere, we've got something for you as well. We're going to do a photo up also. Uh, this plaque in recognition of your support and the city's support of us, and we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Harold wants you to know he's smiling. Yeah, can't stop smiling in the back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the other uh, reason that we are here uh, is because of. Uh, a very kind organization uh, that has a big heart and they were willing to put their money uh, where their heart was and so we've got a representative from HMS development this is their land that we're on right now temporarily right we're gonna get it eventually right okay, okay. just making sure you all heard it uh, so uh, HMS development is our uh, partner they're the developer of this area here and so we're gonna have Kevin Malshine come up and tell us a little bit about uh, his support thank you by thanking my wife Barbara over here and then also my partners and our partners in this project. We have the Spencer family and the Henson family who are also here. Harold also thank you. Harold special shout out to your staff for processing this project with a with a passion that reflects their passion for uh, the VCP and the, and the mission. Uh, I was just supposed to give you a, a couple minute overview of how we got to here and uh, in 2018, January, the City Council passed a resolution that was in support of the Mayor's challenge to end homelessness in the City of Longmont. Uh, our organization does a lot of development in the city, and we try to add a, a charitable factor to each one, so we were recruited to find the right parcel. The problem is there are a lot of generous churches that wanted to donate land. The problem is uh, it's a NIMBY issue. Nobody wanted them in their backyard. So the Mayor Bagley and the City Council had a brilliant idea. They said, why don't you just put it right in your next community, which is uh, Mountain Brook, which is where you're at. And just to give you a scale for it, it basically this project, this community will run all the way up to the back of the, back of the uh, Home Depot over there. So uh, the, we researched how many new home uh, developments have incorporated transitional homeless facilities in their new home development. And in the country, that number is exactly zero, zero. And so, sadly, there's a stigma that goes that that makes it difficult to sell new homes in a place where there's also transitional homeless facilities. Uh, City of Longmont's response to that was, "Well, that's great at zero because that means we're going to be the first. And uh, so, we actually did more research. We did uh, research in facilities to find where better and facilities could actually be operated within a new home community. We went to California, Virginia, Florida. Our last stop was Kansas City, Missouri to visit a new group called VCP. And so I had four hours <clears throat> in Kansas City, went out to 8900 Trost, and uh, the founders <laughs> blew me off. <laughs> totally ignored me. They ignored me for a reason that I later appreciated, which was somebody there was much more important. They were helping individual individual veterans. So I really came to appreciate that. But I got to walk around. I got to meet Kyle, who uh, was working a job delivering pizzas. And he was working on custody of his children, getting custody of his children. I got invited in to Leo's place. Leo's a Vietnam veteran with a gorgeous dog. And Leo was making dinner, invited me in to talk. I came out of that, that four-hour meeting and it was really an it moment for me because there's so much, when you go to their facility, there's so much positive energy between the veterans and the volunteers that I said, we're gonna turn this from what could be a perceived stigma into a positive. So with uh, this community being built, there'll be 460 middle-class families, mostly middle-class families living here, and they're, they're gonna have access to world-class amenities, traditional amenities, clubs, et cetera, but they're going to have one brand new and unique amenity, and that is compassion, 
and that is community service. So you can grab your cup of coffee, you can walk down here and you can help a vet with a resume. You can help them with a budget. You can walk over here and help Habitat build eight Habitat homes. And so we're hoping that at some point in the future, we can help not only help the veterans here, but help eliminate that stigma that comes with this type of facility. And therefore, I hope that five or 10 years from now, when somebody asks the question, how many new home communities have incorporated a transitional homeless facility, hopefully that number is five, hopefully it's 10, hopefully it's 50, but hopefully it's not just one. I, I did also want to give you the reason why the founders, it's become, I have such a strong passion for their mission. What I found was, what you heard was the four co-founders, they're all served in combat zones. And when they came back, they all will be honest about their struggles that they've had. And if I was in that situation, I would have ridden, I would have run and hide and what not, not wanted to do anything with it. They turned and ran back to help those that are struggling. That's their therapy, that was their choice. Number two, nobody would have said, nobody would have uh, blamed them if they said, this is for combat veterans only because we have special issues. No, they said it's anybody who took the oath to serve their country regardless of discharge status or years of service. They also uh, do another thing, which is these tiny homes are beautiful and they provide a great shiny penny, but for about every tiny home that has a veteran in it, they provide services to about 100 veterans who just walk in with anything from needing a cane to needing a bus ride to needing some help getting a job. And it's really an amazing mission. Now, uh, I did also want to, set, so in closing, I do want to thank BCP because 700 cities have requested to be the first expansion city. We're the first expansion city, and I want to thank BCP for trusting us with that honor. There's one last thing in closing, which is uh, Mark's become a great friend, and we want to really wish him a safe and happy return a year from now. And more importantly, over here, if you don't mind standing, I've got Chastity, Nickel, Jack. Where are you, Jack? Oh, they're all in the back. I just thank you so much. Their dad's leaving for a year. Thank you for coming to Longmont, and Longmont, Colorado is here for you. Thank you very much. No, Kevin, real quick, uh, this will just take one quick second. Uh, Kevin pointed out that Longmont is the first expansion city. Uh, if I had to point to one single reason why out of all 700 cities and say that that's it, that reason is Kevin Molshine. Now, he's got a lot of partners, and we appreciate that, but he was the driving force, and if you've worked with Kevin, you know he's not going to leave you alone. He drove it to get it here. But anyway, so Kevin, we thank you for bringing us here just as much as you're thanking us for being here. So thank you and Thanks, everybody who helps. I'm smart now. I waited until I got the longest time on the mic. <laughs> You guys can probably sit at this point because this will be a while. Okay, so uh, no, uh, again, thanks everyone. Uh, we have some special thanks that we want to give uh, to folks, and so I want to call people out by name. This is by no means the uh, entire list, and uh, I apologize in advance if we left anyone off. I just want you to know that we could not be here without the support of the community. Uh, so uh, first off, uh, obviously Governor Polis for being here. Senator Donovan, thank you uh, again for your support of veterans and for being here as well. Um, we've got a couple of folks from Kansas City I want to mention. Uh, Teresa Lohr, uh, Kansas City City Councilwoman. Stand up if you would, please. <laughs> I like to take credit for all of the success of VCP with sometimes these guys as well. I will tell you that Teresa is the reason we're really here. Uh, she is also the person who will not let things go. In Kansas City, when the city was kind of like, oh, we're not really sure we want to do that, she stood in someone's office until they said, okay, you're going to do it. Um, it was really kind of this shy of a this side of a restraining order is where she was. So, um, so she is an amazing resource, uh, and so we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you very much. Uh, Catherine Harville's also here. I believe. Oh, 
Uh, Community American in Kansas City, also one of our uh, big sponsors. So I uh, appreciate you coming all the way out here from Kansas City and all the folks that came out from uh, Kansas City. Appreciate that. Uh, city Manager Harold uh, Dominguez, we appreciate you. Uh, the city council members from Longmont, I know some of you are here. If you are, if you can stand, I would appreciate it. We appreciate you. Thank you. We, uh, again, without the support of the community and the city, we would not be here as well. Um, uh, Kevin, uh, Malshine, Don Henson, and uh, Ken Spencer, uh, if you guys stand for us, please. Um, I appreciate you. <laughs> HMS development. They didn't realize what they were signing up for when they agreed to work with us. Um, and uh, I'd also like to uh, recognize the folks from Walmart. There's some folks here from Walmart. Walmart was our first house sponsor here in Longmont. So they jumped on board way before anybody else did. So I know we've got some folks here. Stand up if you would, please. Thank you very much. Um, the other folks I want to point out, and I won't laundry list it, but I, again, we would not be here without these folks. So in your programs, if you'll pull this, this little uh, sheet out, okay? This is an interactive part. You're going to do this. I promise you'll like it. Okay, pull this piece out. And so take a look on the, the one side. It's the invitation. On the back side are all of the people who also help make this possible. So we want to give them a shout out, a round of applause for these folks as well. And while you happen to have that out, I don't know if you guys are uh, wanting to take pictures of me. Go ahead. Get your phones out. I'm working. Get your phones out because at the bottom here is a QR code. If you would, you can donate right now by scanning this QR code with your picture. So you're going to take a picture of me and then scan this at the same thing. Uh, and you can donate right here, right now. So if you uh, so feel inclined, I know you've already been very supportive, but now is your opportunity to do the same thing. COVID is hitting hard, especially in the homeless community. The funds you donate today will go to our response, especially this fall, as we see uh, folks that really need help with rapid response. And our goal is obviously to keep people in their houses. Uh, if they are on the streets, we're gonna get them help. So that's what this is going to. So if you get a chance and you wanna donate, we appreciate that. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to bring up uh, the Executive Director of Colorado. Maybe. So we'd also like to, excuse me. So also we'd like to thank actually all of our staff that actually does everything behind the scenes. All the, all the uh, individuals in the green VCP shirt. Oh, no. The ones that make Mark look good. Um, and now it's back to you. I, 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 I don't want you to forget that. Oh, they're not. They're, I promise they're not forgetting. Paul's, Paul's going to talk all about them. So um, I appreciate you guys again. Thank you very much. And so, Paul, come on up. Executive Director of Colorado. to be COVID safe. So uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Paul Melroy. I'm the executive director here in Colorado for BCP. Uh, huge thank you to everybody that's here today to celebrate this milestone with us. Um, I, I find it personally humbling to, to recognize the level of support that our organization gets from our different donors, our partners, our, and the community. And you just heard a lot of the, a lot of the names associated with all those folks. Uh, we're just we're, we're really honored to, to, that you want to be part of what we're doing. Um, there's a reason the word community is part of our name. Um, the support of the community is critical not only to our organization, but more importantly to the veterans we serve, um, helping these folks uh, attain and maintain a, a stable, healthy, productive place in, in the community is kind of a win-win situation that we strive for. Um, you've heard about all the amazing things that have happened to, to get us to today. Um, if you step back from that, there are just hundreds of people and thousands and thousands of man hours uh, that went into to getting us here. Um, and we appreciate every single one of the folks that's pitched in in some way. Uh, we can't say thank you enough. So you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, on a personal note, too, I, I do want to uh, mention a couple people who have been incredibly helpful to me. I just moved here a few months ago. Um, Kevin Mulshine and Mark Solomon uh, have both become my friends um, and have been just invaluable in getting 
getting me situated here and, and making the transmission transition smooth. So I, I really appreciate that. And to echo what Vinny was just talking about, um, unbelievable amount of work by the staff. I have to, to give a shout out to the Colorado team here, Liz and Sean. Uh, amazing amount of work, and I have to I have to cite Kelly too from Kansas City, who's just done a tremendous amount of work uh, trying to make this happen. So thank you. But I mean, it, it really, this is a talk about taking a village. I mean, there's a huge amount of work that went into this, uh, and lots more to do. Um, so I wanted to take a, a moment to talk about the future. Um, our, our founders have shown that you know the seemingly impossible is indeed possible uh, with what they've done in Kansas City. So I, I've been given a, a, a blueprint for success here, um, and there's just a, there's a tremendous amount of work to do, but we've got a pretty good idea where we're going. Um, getting the village built is obviously of uh, high importance to us, but that's not the only way we serve veterans. Um, even though our Colorado team right now is working out of our homes, um, a high priority is getting a location opened up here in Longmont for outreach. And we're actually doing outreach right now. Sean's, a, Sean's our director of veteran services and uh, uh, doing case management right now. He's an extremely busy man. Um, we can dramatically increase the number of folks we're, we're serving when we uh, can get a place open. Um, we're also looking to add some staff here in the near future, too. We'll ramp up, and, and that'll help us ramp up the number of people we're serving. Um, and this will all happen over the next couple of months. Um, this fall, the, the infrastructure will be going in here on this property, and, and not just here for the village, but the entire Mountain Brook property. So there's going to be a, a big subdivision here with all kinds of different homes, and um, we're, we're excited about that. Um, we are hoping that uh, in, in the early spring we can uh, go vertical on our village, on our houses. They're stick built uh, with poor, poor foundations, and uh, these things are really, they're not only built to code, but really, they're hardy buildings. Um, so we're excited about that, and um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see vets moving in next summer. That's the, that's the goal right now. Um, I know quite a number of folks in this crowd here like to volunteer. Uh, we'll be looking for people to swing hammers and paintbrushes. But we'll need volunteers to help with ongoing things, too. Uh, when we get our outreach center open, well, we'll need some people to help us. And when we get the community center open in the village, we'll be looking for, for additional help. Um, and in a, uh, hopefully in a post-COVID world, we'll have more events and, and things going on where we're out in the community. In a perfect world, we'd be taking that, that model tiny house all over the place so uh, people could check it out and see what we're all about. So we'll look forward to that day, and we'll, we'll need help with those things, too. Um, so please keep us in mind, and um, please keep in mind, as, as Mark mentioned, we still need ongoing financial support, even once the village is built. Um, we, we need you to help us make our jobs obsolete. That's, that's the goal, is to end veterans' homelessness and put us out of business. Um, so that's going to wrap up this portion of things. We're going to move on to the, uh, the ceremonial shovels of dirt uh, and photo ops. Um, what I would like to ask is that... Um, our, our four co-founders, Brian, Mark, Brandon, and Vinny, um, my Colorado team, uh, Kevin, uh, Don, and Ken from HMS, Harold from the city, and Bonnie Finley. Uh, if y'all would step back to the tiny house, we're going to we're gonna, uh, grab, oh grab some shovels and hands here and uh, take some pictures. But I also want to...
Jonas, man.